What if Abu was a princess? Wait, is that Pumba? Hey everyone, this is Mayu. Welcome to Fun Friday. Every Friday, I try to do something new, fun, or challenging. Today is going to be a really fun episode. I'm going to be reimagining different Disney animals as beautiful princesses, and these animals could either be sidekicks or they could be the main character in their own movie. I wonder how they're all going to turn out. Like, are they going to actually look pretty or elegant as human princesses? Hmm. So I'm going to start this video off with a challenging one, I think. I'm going to try to reimagine Pumbaa from The Lion King into a beautiful human princess. And I think because of Pumbaa's very iconic and very like strong features, I think that's where most of the challenge is going to come from because, you know, his Let's say his nose, his snout area, those big tusks, and uh, you know just the fact that he he has a very iconic look to him. It could be a little bit challenging at first when I was looking at this design uh, to turn all of that into like a graceful looking woman. So like especially the tusks. Like how am I going to reimagine those on a human's face and still make it look like? I'm just not drawing a woman with like gigantic tusks coming out. Like that's not what I want to do. So how am I going to handle all that? The face was going to be a challenge, I knew. For my princess's body design, I had a lot of fun with her dress and her outfit and just like how puffy and flowy her dress is going to be. I made her with a beautiful full figure and then she has like her hands on her hips. So she's got a lot of confidence and some attitude. Maybe she got that from Timon. I really like her expression and the fact that she has this really big smile. I tried to make her eyes kind of triangular shape to resemble Pumbaa's. And as for her nose, I did want to exaggerate it just slightly to give off that famous Pumbaa look. And for the tusks, so I was thinking, how am I gonna handle those tusks? Hmm. I was thinking it would be interesting if I kind of had like maybe two pieces of hair, stylish pieces of hair that comes out towards her face. So nothing coming away like towards the, you know, her head. It's going the other way around towards the center of her face. It kind of will remind me of at least the like um, design of the tusks, the, the curve coming in towards her like the center of the face and then when I'm coloring it I think maybe the color is going to bring out a lot more of that familiarity in that area so I thought that might be a fun way to play this. Actually this color scheme really reminds me of the time when I turned Scar into a beautiful powerful looking princess. It was all the different you know, really nice earth tones and the darks and the tans. So I really like that color scheme and I'm glad I'm revisiting it here. Honestly, I think The Lion King is my most favorite Disney film like ever and probably one of my most favorite animated films like across all like animation and anime and all that. Just love the story and like that power struggle between the different characters and obviously, you know, Pumbaa and Timon, they are, you know, they were one of the highlights of the movie for me. I felt this character design gave me a lot of freedom in terms of uh, like infusing my own creative thinking in like just the design overall and the color scheme because Pumbaa's colors like the original character he doesn't really have a lot of different types of colors he has like I feel like the color scheme is quite limited and my design has um, like a limited color scheme as well but I did have uh, like I purposely created more sections in her outfit to give me more opportunity to kind of explore like little subtle shifts in the different tones, the different shades. So I'll get more variety within like a set number of actual colors. Mm -hmm. 
I like that dress design I gave her, especially the part where it fans out at the bottom. Like, can you just imagine her little feet beneath them or like underneath the fabric going dee -dee 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 as she walks along? I think that's kind of funny. I think it's a good idea to get some bright pops of color in there as well. We have a lot of dark, deep, heavy colors, so I want to brighten things up just a little bit. Yeah, let's make them match. There we go. Okay, the moment of truth. So I'm gonna color her hair really nice and dark and then for the hair pieces by her face let's see what a difference is going to make when I change the colors. Okay I really like this. I was having you know so many thoughts before I drew this character design like during the concept stage I wasn't sure if this was going to work if it will look like his tusks or not but I'm so glad from my point of view at least I think it works totally works oh I am so happy such a nice design okay I am satisfied so I've drawn a sidekick as a beautiful princess and now I'm going to draw a main character and this time it is going to be from a phantom that I I haven't really done a lot of, like I've drawn some things before. I've drawn this character as a human before, I think, but not as a princess. So let's see how differently I'm going to reimagine her this time in this video. So this is going to be Judy Hopps from Zootopia. If Zootopia was a princess movie. Yeah, why not? I think it's going to be fun to translate her police uniform into a beautiful, like, billowy, flowy princess gown. So I'm imagining her as this young, very, like, hopeful and capable young princess and she wanders off into this great new grand um, Zootopia kingdom or something like that. And there along the way she meets all kinds of characters and uh, she finds a way to help them all out. I think her, you know, her personality is very bubbly, very uh, like buoyant, very hopeful, cheerful and confident. So I really like the like the hairstyle I gave her with those bouncy, like anti-gravity uh, pigtails. I love those. And also I think they're a really nice like translation of her bunny ears. And of course I have to get her carrot pin in there somehow. Obviously it's not a carrot pin. It's, mm, I don't know, maybe some kind of princess wand or some kind of small like prop she likes to use for doing princessy things. So I did want to stylize a little bit, give it more like edges to make it look more like it could be made out of something more um, expensive or rare. It could have like these different edges like uh, maybe like a big gem of some kind. I like how I designed her badge into some kind of centerpiece for her dress. In case you want to see how I redesigned Judy and Nick Wilde as people, like humans, you can check these videos out on my Mayu channel. It's been a while and I'm so glad I'm diving back into this fandom. I'm also really glad you enjoyed volume 11 of my Draw One Character in 10 Art Styles Challenge from last week. Okay, so I'm going to be using quite a lot of my blue markers now 
First, I want to do like a lighter feeling on top of her dress. And then as I work my way down, I thought to kind of like have this nice gradual shift into deeper and deeper blues. I was thinking, you know, sometimes I like to just have a solid color and just have like some dimension playing on that. And other times when I'm designing different dresses or outfits, I like to change things up a bit and maybe have like a, a gradient effect using my markers and lots of layering. Oh no, my blood marker slipped. Okay, I hope I can really blend that in, in the trim area. And I hope you're not gonna see that once this is all finished. I thought to give her a nice silver trim at the bottom of the dress just to match and infuse more of the silver from the other parts of this design. In all my different princess reimaginings, have I ever done a silver haired princess before? I can't remember from the top of my head, but I think she's looking pretty cool. Now that I think about it, maybe her carrot prop is kind of like some kind of uh, magical princess wand disguised as just this, you know, pretty like crystal trinket that she likes to carry around. And then whenever she needs to, she can secretly uh, cast like some kind of spell, like a recording spell um, to collect evidence of bad guys. And then she'll present the evidence to the king. And then that's how she busts the bad guy's butts. I think this princess is going to teach a lot of the bad guys in her kingdom some tough life lessons and they're going to be very wary of her. Okay, so I'm going to try to reimagine Abu from Aladdin as a beautiful princess and I think this is going to be an interesting challenge because of just the face design, the fact that he has this, you know, famous monkey tail. How am I going to do that with on, you know, like a human character? And what kind of outfit should I give her? Like should she be in the traditional like billowy, flowy princess dress or should I choose a different kind of princess? Um attire for my character. I was thinking since Jasmine has her pants and she doesn't really, you know, I've never seen her in like a traditional princess dress before. So I was thinking for this design, it would be fun if I went in a similar direction and not draw a character in, you know, a princess dress, but something that's different and more fitting. Oh yeah, the tail was kind of a challenge at first. Like I was thinking, how am I going to do the tail of a monkey on a human character that's going to look natural for a princess to have and it's obviously not a tail. I was thinking, since she has this nice big long ponytail, I could then just extend that down her back and then it kind of flips up. And I think that's a natural way to integrate something like that. Two of my recent books were both number one new releases this last weekend. 30 Days of Kawaii Horror is my latest title in my 30 Days of Coloring series where you color a page a day. It's the number one new release in its category and I'm so glad many of you are embarking on your own 30 day creative journeys. Also, Fun Puns Coloring Book was number one new release in its category. And number two was a full color Fun Puns gift book. I'm glad you're having a punnerful time with these titles. I'll give you a sneak peek flip through in the end and you can see how different the coloring book and a gift book looks like. I only make about a dollar on these books. They're in my $7 and under category on my Amazon store. I want to price them really low so more of you can enjoy them. Currently, there are almost 100 items in my $7 category, including paperbacks and coloring books, and I'll be adding more. I feel awesome building a whole bookstore for you to explore your imagination in and, you know, get lost in your own creative worlds. 
So keep up the great work, everyone. I'm always making more books for you. I've done more than 100 titles so far, and let's keep building this online art family together. Explore my bookstore on Amazon, the links in the video description, and share your work in your Amazon reviews and on Instagram with the hashtag MayYouArt. I can't wait to see what you'll create next. You know what, let's get some gold in there. That's gonna really brighten things up and it's gonna give this piece a really nice, you know, sparkly special look to it. I also wonder why does she have this expression? Something is not right in her life or she's not liking something. Let me know all your fun fan theories and creative backstories in the comments below. I gotta know, what is with this Abu princess? And as always, if you like content like this, hit that like button, smash it real good, and subscribe in case you haven't yet so you won't miss my new videos. Be sure to turn on the bell for notifications so you actually get notified and you won't miss out on any future videos I make. Check out my Mayu channel for over 900 videos and go binge watch some more. And I'm gonna see you real soon in a few seconds. I'm super happy to know that more of you are enjoying my Fun Puns coloring book and the Full Color gift book. They were the number one and number two new releases in the same category on Amazon last week. Enjoy wonderful comics to make your day fantastic. If you like my fun art, just go for it. I just love the color printing of the gift book. It really feels like a book you can get in a bookstore. The quality is really nice and a great value of under $7 on my May bookstore on Amazon. I've also seen more of you completing my 30 days of coloring books. Some of you actually shared all of your work in those books, like one piece at a time. I love that you're dating each image as you complete them. Congratulations to all of you who have finished your 30 day journey. I encourage you to start another book in this series because your creativity is just like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. And that's why I recently released 30 days of kawaii horror. It's a great continuation of the work you're already enjoying. I've made three titles so far in my 30 Days of Coloring series, and more are coming because I really love inspiring you to keep powering up your imagination on a regular basis. You can color as much or as little of each image as you want. There's no pressure and is a great daily stress relieving hobby. Once you're finished the 30 days, you'll have completed an entire book filled with valuable personal memories. You can proudly show your work to your friends and online. I'm also glad some of you have completed my 100 Styles Art Coloring Book, where you color all 100 of the character designs I made in Volume 1 to 10 of my Draw One Character in 10 Styles video series. This coloring book is double the size of my main line of coloring books, and many of you have watched me design each character from scratch in different art styles from start to finish. These books are truly special because you are part of the process. You've seen me approach each one of these character designs in my videos. And now you can color them however you want in different animated, cartoon, and comic styles. They're not sold anywhere else, only on my Mayu bookstore on Amazon. You know, I honestly wish I had someone like me when I was younger and learning art to provide me with their years of drawing experience and guidance. That's why I love making all kinds of coloring books, creativity books, how-tos, and art books for you. There are over 100 titles now because I know inspiration is one of the most important things to keep motivated no matter if you want to become an artist or not. I believe creativity is very good and healing for the mind and soul. And plus you're accomplishing something, which is a great confidence booster. Go ahead and treat yourself or gift them. The link to my Mayu bookstore on Amazon is in the video description. Happy creating.